the indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of, from getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Now, after years of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place we're sowing the seeds of a better way. A way with more ease, abundance, and flow. Get ready to learn about indie authorship from a whole new perspective. We're about to cover everything from releasing your poverty mentality to manifesting your millionaire author destiny. I'm Carissa Andrews, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Well, hey there, guys. Welcome back to the Author Revolution Podcast. I can't believe it's already the end of June. Like, how did that happen? And I know I say that kind of on and off throughout the year, but truly, it's like, This entire year, I'd been waiting for those conferences to come up. And now that they're passed, I'm like, what in the world just happened? How is it already the end of June? Oh my gosh. Well, the good news is for those of you who were not able to attend InkersCon in person, you can attend InkersCon digitally coming up very soon. So stay tuned. I'm going to be sending out information to be able to get signed up because yeah, you can do some amazing things even with the digital version of the conference. There are even live Zoom roundtables where you can interact with people there as well. So I'm really excited for that digital version to be coming out soon. I can't wait to see how it plays out, to see some of the conversations and the speeches that were delivered that I wasn't able to get to. So I'm really getting excited about that next phase of InkersCon. So be prepared. I will be giving you links and probably sending out an email very soon. Uh, In the meantime, it will be in the show notes as well, in case you're curious. So you can always head over there. This is episode number 189. Okay, so today, though, I've been thinking an awful lot about what I want to talk about. And since I'm kind of in this conference like mojo where all of the cool, fun things have happened, all of the fun stuff has gone on, I'm still in this place of excitement from them. I kind of wanted to go back and revisit the conversation that I had at Idaho because I think it's really important. I've been feeling, and I don't know if you've been feeling this too, but I know I have, I've been feeling a little bit meh since everything's been over. Maybe it's post-conference depression. I don't know. It's just kind of like, meh, I'm sad now. I'm sad that that was the last of the conferences for 2023 as far as I'm aware right now. Unless, of course, anyone wants to convince Craig Martell that I should be at 20 books this year. And so I've been thinking about, you know, my author career, I've been thinking about what I'm looking forward to writing. I'm obviously in the middle of writing Midlife Wolf Mate. And so don't get me wrong, that's a lot of fun as well. But of course, I'm still trying to get back to the rom-com stuff, which is obviously very fun. And so there's just been a lot of like, up and down kind of feelings of like, I'm sad that this is over. I'm sad that all of this is done. And now we're moving on to the next thing. So I want to remind myself, I guess, and maybe you as well. No, definitely you as well. I want to remind us of what we are aspiring for. And so I wanted to Revisit the speech from Idaho Writers Guild Conference, and I want you to know what I was saying, because that particular conference wasn't recorded. It wasn't available in any kind of digital format. And so if you'd like to hear what I had to say and kind of play along as if you are there at the conference, I would love it. So let's get to it. Well, hi there, everybody. (laughs) This is going to be an epic day. Can you feel it? Yeah. Okay. First of all, I want to say thank you to the Idaho Writers Guild for putting on this amazing event and for asking me to be a part of it. I am both humbled and thrilled to be here. Now, before we get started, how many of you are aspiring authors? Aspiring author. Now, that's a term that's thrown around an awful lot. This is someone who's working on becoming an author, someone with hopes and plans and dreams all infused with their words. Authorship is their current trajectory. So how many of you are already published? When we're no longer an aspiring author, but instead embody one, what is it we aspire for next? What is our why? I wish when I was first starting out in this indie author gig that I would have been told to aspire for more. More than just writing the book, more than just publishing the book, more than just wanting my books to make money. I wish I would have been told to dream bigger and to push the boundaries of what I believe I am capable of. 
or to look at my author career through the lens of curiosity so that I could enjoy the experience of being a creator. I wish I would have been told to explore all the ways I wanted my work to touch the lives of others because it will. And it does. Every day. I wish I would have been told to drop the striving artist mentality and trust that the entertainment, escapism, and enlightenment I create are far more valuable than I originally thought. Or to treat my writing like that incredible business opportunity it is, and to trust that it gets to grow, and it gets to be easy and fun. To play with the unique and engaging ways I can entertain my readers and keep my career fresh and exciting decades later. Because here we are 13 years in, and I am still learning all of this. Being an author is more than just writing words, more than just publishing books, more than simply making money. Being an author means creative freedom. Freedom to explore the desires of our hearts and the concepts that burden our minds. Freedom to unleash our imaginations and inspire the imaginations of others. It means control. Control over the trajectory of our careers. Control over our stories. Control over our destinies. Control over pretty much every aspect, if I'm truly honest. It means responsibility. The responsibility to decide for ourselves what we work on. What we allow in. The teachers we listen to what we are worthy of, the way we shape our future. We are ultimately responsible for the direction of our careers, responsible for the words that we spew into the world, responsible for the legacy we leave behind. When we first start out, we're just focused on the idea of being an author, right? The deep desire to get the words on the page, the push to publish and make it all real and official. We aren't necessarily thinking long-term, We aren't thinking about book two or three or four or 24, but we should be. When I first became an indie author, I was completely naive, and maybe you can relate. I thought learning the ins and outs of self-publishing would be easy. I thought the books would fly off the shelves. I mean, I was the next Stephanie Meyer, right? (laughs) I thought the words would always flow with speed. As it turns out, being an author also means riding the wave of creativity. Sometimes it flows, and sometimes it trickles. Sometimes the stress of real life hinders it all, and we need to learn how to accept the balance that brings. Being an author means bending to the will of our muse, and let's face it, sometimes they have some crazy ideas. It means being a continual student, because nothing in this industry is static. Just ask ChatGPT. <laughs> it also means having the wisdom to trust your own instincts when something doesn't feel right or trying a different tactic because you feel called to. It means establishing a baseline, a routine, so you can wrangle this beast known as writing before it takes you down. We're all here because without our stories, without putting pen to paper, we would be lost in the sea of confusion known as life. Our stories are what ground us. They nourish us. They push us forward. They crack open our souls and help us to grow in ways we can never predict. But what happens when the years of being an author take their toll? When things don't come easily? When there's so much more to learn than we anticipated? Or when books don't fly off the shelves the way we had hoped? Do we give up? Give in? Move on? Some authors, maybe. But not you. You will aspire for more. Winston Churchill once said, Never give up on something that you can't go a day without thinking about. I don't know about you, but writing is that thing for me. Even on those days when it was hard, and when it still is, when scenes weren't clicking, when characters weren't behaving, when being on social or selling books was the last thing I wanted to do, I still couldn't stop thinking about writing. Or perhaps, better said, my characters wouldn't stop their incessant chatter. (laughs) As it turns out, being an author means leaning into something far bigger than ourselves and trusting that the reason for it will become clear eventually. Can you make a living writing books? Absolutely. Just look around you. I guarantee you there are authors in this room making it happen. They'll blow your mind with how much money they're earning. Can this gig get easier? For sure. There's always a plan you can implement or a way to reinvent yourself. 
Can your writing get faster? 100%. It's called plotting first, just ask Troy. But at the end of the day, you're the one who knows what you aspire to become, what you're growing into, what you are working toward. How your author career is destined to evolve. Only you can steer the ship in the right direction and find the evidence of it unfolding in the moments, big and small, as they occur. Author. Best-selling author. Award-winning author. Six-figure author. Millionaire author. Let those words settle in your mind for a moment. There are stepping stones along your path. Some likely jump out at you because they're already on your radar, and others, perhaps make you cringe. Millionaire, that's a hot button word for many of us. See how it feels rolling through your mind and off your tongue. Does the thought of being a millionaire author make you excited to leap at the chance or recoil from its intensity? Millionaire is aspiring for more. Millionaire is a heading that keeps you focused and pointed in a very particular direction. It keeps you innovating. It keeps you striving. It keeps you locked into a vibe that very few ever dream of. And sometimes you're going to need that. When your first book isn't an overnight success, or your third series flops, or you're so tired by the time you get to book 28 that you've forgotten what you loved about writing, aspiring for more reminds you why you're doing it, what you're working towards. It will keep you on the path when you're in the messy middle of your author story. Because I can't speak without getting a little woo, and if you know me, this comes as no surprise, let's talk about manifestation. Manifestation is a mind game we all need to play. It's about turning thoughts into things and making them real. We do this already with our books, right? They begin as thoughts until you're holding physical copies in your hand. But manifestation is at play with everything we see in our lives, whether we're aware of it or not. We're either creating by default, or we're stepping up as deliberate creators. In my mind, deliberate manifestation comes in three steps. Step one is you decide you want something. Step two is you trust you can have it. This is also known as alignment or locking in the vibe. And step three is you take inspired action until it is yours. This process works regardless of what it is you're manifesting. It doesn't matter if it's your spaghetti for dinner finding a way to come to the incredible conference we're at, or having a millionaire author career. The process is always the same. First, you have to decide. You decide you want more. You decide to go big or go home. You decide to embrace whatever your big, hairy, audacious author destiny looks like to you, and you refuse to give it up. Sure, you can have smaller goals along the way. You can reach for your first three-figure month, then four, then five, Incrementally step your way there until the next logical step is your ultimate one, your end game. That's where you're headed. That's what you lock into. Having that bigger goal holds you to step two, alignment. You trust you'll get there. You know it's all working out for you. You don't question your worth, and you ignore the imposters in your head because there will be many. You keep taking inspired action and put one foot in front of the other until it's yours. Now, maybe millionaire author isn't your heading. It wasn't mine either in the beginning, but I wish it had been. I wish I had locked onto that course sooner so I could have gotten out of my own way when those imposters crept in and told me I was crazy, or that I wasn't good enough, that I'd never make it in this industry, because I wasted valuable time. If the word millionaire makes you cringe, I want you to ask yourself why. Challenge those thoughts. Why do you think it's not possible for you? Those are limiting beliefs, by the way, and just stories you're telling yourself. Because you can accomplish anything that you put your mind to. So tell better stories about what you get to receive. You're an author now, you can do that. When we dream bigger and aspire to become something far greater, we rise to the occasion, we move mountains, we conquer worlds. We become the chosen one of our own life story. Don't settle on what feels comfortable or doable or realistic. That's for those unimaginative ones, not you. Fear is a liar too, so don't listen to that either. Aspiring or published, you are an author. 
you're already a dreamer. Dream your big dreams and manifest a destiny that makes you excited to strive for it and makes you feel a little nervous so you know you've pushed past your boundaries. No matter your reason, your why, or your end game for your author career, going forward, I want you to dig deeper. I want you to aspire for more. So there you go. That was the speech I delivered in Idaho on May 19th, 2023. It obviously had to be adjusted a little bit since I was reading it here for you. And we did have audience participation that day. So we were able to, you know, have a conversation about like, who were the aspiring authors? Who were the published authors? In what were they actually trying to create at this time frame? I actually had that question because I wanted to get some of my nerves out and ask them like, what are they working towards? And there really was a vibe in the room. Like everyone was trying to figure out how to get their books published, how to make it in this industry. It was very much that the vibe, like just how do you do this thing? How do you make this work for you? And I remember afterwards, and I think I've mentioned this before, (laughs) Kristen Lamb came up to talk to me and she's like, you know what? Oh my gosh, here's what I would have had had done. Had I asked everybody, you know, who's an aspiring author, I would have had them raise their hand and then smack themselves (laughs) with it because that's the last time they're going to call themselves an aspiring author. I love that conversation. She's so funny. But she's so true too. Like even in my right frame of mind book, I talk about that. The second you decide you're going to be an author and you put pen to paper, it doesn't matter if you're published. It doesn't matter if you have gotten very far. The simple fact that you are writing with the intention of publishing makes you an author. And that's so true. There is nowhere in any dictionary that says you have to be a published or acclaimed or anything in order to be an author. So I hope this was helpful. I hope hearing these words shows you a little bit about what we can think about and how we can think about our author careers, how we can actually strive for more, how we can strive to be better, how we can aspire for more. I don't think many authors really put a lot of thought into what they think their career gets to look like. There's like a vague idea of like, I want this to be successful, right? I want this to be a success and it's going to be this book or I'm going to be the next JK Rowling or Stephanie Meyer or whoever. But we don't really think about like the logistics of what is it we really want? What is it we're really working towards? And even if millionaire author isn't the vibe for you, like I said, it doesn't have to be. What's the underlying feeling around your ultimate success? What does that feel like for you? Does it feel good? Does it feel like freedom? Does it feel like creative freedom? Does it feel like love and support because maybe you didn't get that in your family life? Like what is the vibe you're searching for? And let that permeate everything you do. Let that be the thing that inspires you and keeps you innovating and keeps you driving forward. Because we've got plenty of reasons to turn back around. This is not always the easiest career, this easiest track to go down. Because for some of us, this is very much a internal thing. We have to dredge up feelings or, you know, think through things that are pulling us in different directions and helping us heal. Writing really, in my mind, is a healing mechanism. It helps us to process. It helps us to see the world slightly differently or to dream up a world that is completely different, right? And all of those things help us to create the life that we're looking for, create whatever it is that we want in the future. And it's so important to be a part of that. It's so important to continue moving forward with it. So regardless of what you're trying to create or how you're you're getting there, just know that you can create whatever you put your heart and mind to. You can decide right now that you're going to earn $50,000 this year and it's going to be amazing. And you can set your sights on it and start working on it and make it happen. Like it doesn't matter what the goal is. There is always a way to make it happen and you have the capability to do so. Okay. (sighs) Well, there you go, guys. That's my pep talk (laughs) for you, for me this week. And I hope that it helps. I hope it helps you to Just get into a a good feeling place and continue on with all of the writing that you have ahead of you. 
Now, if you'd like to download the transcript to today's podcast episode, you can head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 189, and you can get the the transcript or the links like we talked about to InkersCon's digital conference there, and just enjoy the process of writing this summer. Okay, guys, enjoy the process of writing, enjoy the process of creating, but enjoy the balance too. Like get outside and enjoy the sun and the beach and do something fun with your family or your friends and just live your life as if you get to have it all because you do. All right. Okay, well, I myself am going to wrap up today's podcast episode so that I can get on with my own personal writing. I'm halfway through Midlife Wolfmate, should be done by July 9th, which is very cool. I'm excited to get it finished. And yeah, so we'll see how all that goes as well. All right, so go forth and start your author revolution.